Ever since I found out about the Flat Earth City of Zion, Illinois, I have been on the hunt to try and find more information both about it and its founder, John Alexander Dowie. Then as I reached out to try and find some kind of living relative, I found out I am one! Check this out. Here's me, my mom, my grandma, my great-grandma, my great-great-grandpa, and so on and so forth, all the way back to Gilbert Kennedy in 1541. Actually, make that Lord Gilbert Kennedy, the fourth Earl of Cassilis in Scotland. Here's a picture of what his house looks like today, which is pretty cool. All right, now let's go see Dowie and find out how closely we are related. All right, here's Dowie, and it looks like I'm related to him through his wife. Now we're going to count the generations upward, starting with his wife's grandma, since cousins are two people who share the same grandparent. So here's first cousins, second cousins, third cousins, fourth cousins, fifth cousins, sixth cousins, seventh cousins, eighth cousins, ninth cousins, tenth cousins. Now we'll go back down here and take a look at how much longer one line is from the other. Okay, my line is three generations longer than his. That means he is my tenth cousin three times removed. Even though I hate the term removed, because it sounds like I've been kicked out of the family three times, but that's not what it means. It just means that my line is longer than his line. Anyway, this is pretty cool. This should allow me to get a more in-depth look at his life. Now I want to take a look at how our families got separated over time. As I mentioned, Lord Gilbert was born and raised in Scotland. His son, Hugh Huey Kennedy, not making that up, he also was born and died in Scotland. As was his son, Gilbert Kennedy. But Agnes over there looks like she ran off and died in Ireland. I don't know where William died, but I do know that he was born in Ireland. Ah, it looks like William went back to Scotland for a while, and that's where he had his son, David. And David begat Mary, who was born in Scotland and died in Scotland. And Mary begat Richard, who was another true Scot, who was born in Scotland and died in Scotland. And Richard begat James, who was born in Scotland and died in Utah. James Hardeen was one of my pioneer ancestors who discovered the Book of Mormon out in Scotland and then it had such an impact on him that he took his family and sailed all the way out to New York. Then he made a pit stop in Illinois four generations before Dowie was born. He needed some money for supplies, so he worked in the coal mines of Illinois for a bit until he was able to purchase his ox team and covered wagon and take his family the rest of the way to Utah. Actually, it wasn't even called Utah at the time. James Hardeen died in 1891 and Utah became a state in 1896. During that time, the territory was called the Land of Deseret. And I never noticed before, but the territory extended all the way out to LA. That's a big territory. And though that was the name on the map, the members of the church frequently referred to this as the Land of Zion. Again, that was four generations before Dowie was born. Now I'll try and hurry this up so I can get back and focus in on Dowie. James's daughter, Elizabeth, was born in Scotland and died in Mesa, Arizona. Her son, Richard, was born in Deseret and died in Utah because he lived through that transition. He begat my great-grandma, Verna, who was born in Utah and died in Utah. Then there's my grandma, who is still alive today here in Utah. There's my mom who was born in Phoenix, Arizona, and then just passed away last month here in Utah. And then there's me, Kyle Adams, who was born in Utah and still currently live there to this day. 
and it just so happens I live pretty close to Zion National Park. I can literally see it right from my backyard. Now let's go take a look at Dowie's wife's family line. Now we're back to the Scottish Lord Gilbert Kennedy, the fourth Earl of Cassilis, who begat Helen Kennedy through another woman. Exactly what the terms were to that, I don't know. But I can say Helen was born a Scot and died a Scot. And Helen begat William. And William begat William, who begat Janet, who was also born in Scotland and died in Scotland. And Janet begat Margaret, who named her daughter Janet after her mother. And Janet begat Thomas, a good biblical name. And Thomas begat John, another demonstration of biblical allegiance. And John named his daughter Janet, after his good grandmother. And Janet begat Jane, who left Scotland and died in Australia. Exactly why they decided to leave the land of their forefathers and journey to a place so far away, I don't know yet, but I'll certainly look into it. Something interesting to note, though, is Jane Cockburn, while living in Scotland, married a man named Alexander Dowie. Not to be confused with our man, John Alexander Dowie. This is a different guy, though they do look kind of similar. So they got married in Scotland and both died in Australia. But before they died, they had their daughter Jane Dowie, who was born in Australia and died in the flat earth city of Zion, Illinois. So Jane was a Dowie before she got married, and then she married another Dowie, our man John Alexander Dowie, who was born in Scotland. Now I know some of you might be thinking, Ech, is this like a brother-sister marriage kind of thing? Don't worry, they weren't brother and sister. John Alexander Dowie's dad's name was John Murray Dowie, compared to Jane's dad, whose name was Alexander Dowie. So different parents, but he's got a combined name from both of them. John Alexander Dowie and Jane Dowie are not brother and sister, but they are cousins, first cousins, sharing some of the same grandparents. So John and Alexander were two brothers who were born a year apart. Then in 1847, in Scotland, John has a son who he names John Alexander Dowie, our man, whose name appears as a symbol of their bond. Then a few years later, in 1858, while living in Australia, Alexander has a son, and guess what he names him? John Alexander Dowie, the exact same name, another symbol of their friendship. So the marriage of John Alexander Dowie and Jane Dowie can be seen as a third testimony of their enduring friendship. And out of all of the cousins between these two, these two cousins were the only two to intermarry. So I think it makes it all the more significant that the child by the name of John Alexander Dowie was the one to marry his first cousin. As a reminder, John Alexander Dowie was born in Scotland, and Jane was born in Adelaide, Australia which is also where the two of them got married. They got married on May 26th of 1876, one day after John Alexander Dowie's birthday. He was 29 at the time, and Jane was 22, the two of them being about seven years apart. And just because he married his first cousin, that doesn't mean you should. Anyway, I've got a lot more great information here that I can't wait to get into. I'll share more with you guys next week. Thank you all for watching. This video is brought to you by the Flat Earth Institute of Science, with a special thank you to FamilySearch.org for making this video possible. It is a free family history resource to everyone, regardless of religion or cultural background.